Um, hello. Um, so the second order, uh, the second second order effect or the second non-ideality that we're going to talk about is uh, collector breakdown. breakdown and collector breakdown occurs when uh, you continue to increase the collector to emitter voltage uh, when you look at the the IV curve that we drew um, it will appear that you have your VCE and your IC and I'm going to draw it with base width modulation already since we know about it so this is the new IV characteristic a little bit exaggerated, um, but it will appear that you can uh, continue to increase your collector to emitter voltage, and uh, and the trend will continue. In all reality, um, the the collector base junction is a p-in junction, and as any p-in junction that is reverse bias, there is a, a breakdown voltage, meaning a maximum value of reverse bias before you start getting um, a drastic increase in current flow. And so as you go past your VCE breakdown, what you will get here is the same thing. It's just a drastic increase in collector current, uh, which is typically an undesirable effect uh, because that drastic increase in collector current, as we uh, talked about earlier, it's going to increase your junction temperature and uh, perhaps beyond its maximum uh, rating, increase the power dissipation through the transistor to its maximum rating and eventually it's gonna damage your transistor. There are two um, different effects or, or two different ways uh, that this breakdown occurs. One of them is called the avalanche breakdown. And the avalanche breakdown um, occurs due to the following. You increase your collector emitter voltage and now the electrons that are being collected by the collector are gaining a lot of kinetic energy uh, because you're increasing the strength of, the, of that electric field. And so as they move towards the collector, they collide with other electrons that are trapped. They break covalent bonds because they have enough energy to do that. And so they free up additional electrons. And so what you get is essentially an avalanche effect because those newly freed electrons also gain a lot of kinetic energy. Uh, in turn, they collide, break covalent bonds, etc. So we could say you know, electrons with high kinetic energy collide and uh, free other electrons by breaking covalent bonds. Therefore, the collector current increases. So that will be one, one of those effects. It's highlighted. Oops. Uh, launch breakdown. And then the other one being a uh, punch through. And the punch through, as the name may suggest, uh, occurs when you keep increasing your collector to emitter voltage. And as we mentioned previously, when we were talking about base width modulation, as you, as you continue to increase that voltage, your depletion region extends further and further into the base. Um, eventually, your depletion region will uh, cover the entire width of the base, will reach all the way to the emitter, in which case you have no effective width of your base any longer. Uh, and so when that happens, you are basically tying your... Uh, emitter base junction, your base emitter junction, to the VCE voltage, which is now very high, let's say in the order of 40 volts, uh, whereas the maximum, the breakdown voltage or the maximum voltage that you can apply to the base emitter junction uh, without damage is about 6 volts, if you look at the data sheet for a standard small signal transistor. And so, um, obviously, bad things are going to happen, uh, which translates into um, huge amounts of current and eventually transistor damage. So punch through effect, we could summarize it as um, as VCE increases, base width modulation increases, till 
depletion region in base, which is a middle. Okay, that's when punch through occurs. Um, so those are the two uh, effects. Something that I mentioned, but I probably should write, is that for a general purpose mode signal MPN transistor, that uh, breakdown voltage is about 40 volts. Thank you.